Hey, Malcolm, it's Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com. You're from Richmond. Um, I imagine that uh, Virginia Tech recruited you pretty hard. How much are you looking forward to getting up there and playing those guys? Yeah, Virginia Tech definitely recruited me very hard since my sophomore year. And I'm really looking forward to this game because my recruiting, like the whole process went through a lot. So I just can't wait to get back in my home state and just have a, have a great day. Hey, Malcolm, it's David Hood with TigerNet. You just hit on something kind of key. You're, you, in your recruiting, you went through a lot. How hard was it to – you committed to LSU, but yet you stayed patient, stayed in contact with Mike Reed. On signing day, he cries because he feels like you're a son. How hard was it to stay patient and, and wait on a Clemson spot to open up? It wasn't too, it wasn't too much hard. It wasn't too very hard because – through conversation with Dabo Sweeney and my high school head coach, they always told me that patience is key to life, really. And the turtle always wins the race. And the rabbit is real fast, but the turtle wins the race. And great things come with time. And I've always been a patient guy. I understand that God will put me in the position that I need to be in in due time. What was it like to get that call from Coach Reed in, in December, I guess it was, and him say, hey, hey, Malcolm, I finally got a spot for you? It was really like, it was really delightful if I could say, because Clemson is a place that I wanted to be since st I started playing football in high school. I saw my close friend Kayvon Wallace here playing football and doing great things. And this is really somewhere that I wanted to be. I love the culture. And it was something that I always wanted to be a part of. So when Coach Reed called me and Coach Sweeney called me and said that the opportunity was there, I just couldn't pass it up. Malcolm, this is Matt Connolly with the state. Uh, you 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 mentioned Kayvon. Just how much did he help help you? I had talked with him before, and he was saying that y'all would train a lot back home and stuff, and he would work with you a lot. Just how much did he help you, and then what was that like working with him? Yeah, Kayvon is really like a brother to me. He's like an older brother, but he's a very good friend of mine, and he really helped a lot. Me and him work out a lot, and we always get on the phone and chop it up, just play mental gymnastics a lot and talk about life and talk about football and what – Clemson can bring to me in the near comings in life after football and the opportunities that they bring outside of football is just something that I couldn't pass up. We talked a lot about that. Is there anything specifically he helped you with with your game? He really helped me with being patient at the line and also not opening up too much. And he also, the last time we worked out, he helped me with positioning my hands for the ball and showing that, like, putting your hand over top when the ball is in a diagonal position is really effective because he did actually drop a lot of interceptions while he was here, but he made some very great plays. And I like to pick up from that. How did y'all start growing close? Like what, what was it? I know y'all went to the same high school and stuff, but what was it about y'all that, that made y'all so close? Yeah. Him and my brother were pretty cool when my brother played my, when my brother played on the same team as him and my sophomore year when I like, started playing varsity and started being more known around my area. Me and him like hit it off quick and started being recruited more. And like people always said that we were a lot alike about how we carry ourselves outside, outside, outside on the field and about how we present ourselves on the football field and how like intellectual we are about the game. And they say that we move a lot of like here and at Hollis Springs. They say that I make the same movements as him on the field. So, like, we really just hit it all. That's my dog. It's David again. Uh -huh. I have to ask. I talked to Coach Lauren Johnson about, uh, uh, you know, your decision after it all happened. And he said he thought that the night of the national championship game, your phone might have been blowing up and a, a little bit difficult for you. <laughs> what were some examples of some of the messages that you were getting from, you know, from people that, you know, may have been telling you, hey, look, look, maybe you made the wrong decision. Yeah, it was messages from people that some people don't really even really watch football. They just wanted something to jab at me and say. And people all around my area definitely and on Twitter and different recruiting sites were saying maybe I made the wrong decision and I shouldn't have flipped. But I know that I put myself in the perfect position to be great in life. And I feel like Clemson is the best program and best family to be a part of to do so. And I'm glad I made my decision. And not Malcolm to take anything away from LSU, they've always been a great program, but 
do you feel a little bit like now, you know, here you are, you may be going to get ready to play for, you know, in a college football playoff. It just kind of reiterates that, that you made the right choice for you. I feel LSU is definitely a great program, and I was glad they had an opportunity to be a part of that. But I feel that Clemson just sets me up better for life, and I feel like Clemson is going to set me up to be a great football player at the end of the day, and it's going to put me in a great position for life. I'm thankful for Coach Sweeney, Coach Venables, Coach Reed, Coach Brewer, and everybody that just poured into me and is helping me be a great athlete. When you say that they set you up better for life, do you mean things like the Paul journey? Definitely. You know, and the, if so, just, you know, can you speak on that for just a minute about what that means to you? Definitely. I've always put all I can into things outside on the field, outside of the field, because I know that one day the game will end. And I also want to be a multi-millionaire, um, a billionaire if I can, after football. And I know that Paul Journey will set me up with the opportunities with micro internships and making connections with different companies and building relationships with people that's involved with Paul's journey, like Savannah and Jeff Davis. They're just great people and building relationships with them throughout my freshman year is just something that I would never replace. And I'm thankful for having the opportunity. Am I right in that you are a junior in the classroom, came in with 55 hours, and, you know, if you stay here through year three, probably be working on a master's degree by your junior year on the field? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Malcolm, it's Trevor again. Uh, you talked about how important patience was both on and off the field. You, you haven't had to be patient to already make a splash. Um, how, how, how special was that moment uh, getting your first career interception on Saturday? It was a very special moment. I just always was patient throughout the season and waited for my time. I understood that I, asked, that I did put the work in, and I'm just thankful for Coach Venables for just being a great defensive coordinator and calling the right calls and putting me in great positions to make great plays and pouring into me outside of, outside of the field and just helping my intellect of football and helping me become a smarter player. And that helps a lot on the field. And I don't feel like it's anything more I can do other than just learn from him. Are you, are you surprised at all that you're getting a chance to contribute this early or is this what you're expecting coming in? This is, I, I don't really expect too many things in life, but this is actually one thing that I did expect. I understand that I do put the work in and I try to I attempt to buy into the program as much as anyone could. And I'm thankful to be a part of Clemson. This is the best place that I've been in many years. And I really expected to make a big splash, but I'm just thankful that Coach Venables and Coach Reed and the other defensive staff members just poured into me and helped me learn the game plan, helped me learn football more, and just helped me become a great player and put me in positions to make great plays. Malcolm, do you have any idea what you want to do? You mentioned life after football. Do you know what you want to do after football yet? I actually know exactly what I want to do. I want to make a sports apparel company, something like battle sports, but I want to make just gear and shoes and different type of things. And I want to start that when I get into the NFL, and I just want to make that very a very big brand and make a lot from it and learn a lot from the business world as I am doing in college now. And I just want to make a sports apparel company and make a multi-million dollar company. How did you come up with that? And, and when did you start thinking about that? I started thinking about it at a very young age because throughout my time of playing football, people always looked to me for like the gear and like what to wear and the different swag techniques and like, how to put on their things and advice on football on football gear and also gear outside of sports like dressing and fashion. People look at me a lot for fashion. And I just feel like my insight towards how to wear certain things will help the fashion game a lot for sports and for just fashion in general. Have you got your so logo worked out thought already? about it? What would the name of your brand be? I actually don't know yet, but it would be something with a G. For sure. Have you got your logo worked out yet? I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I, <laughs> had a, I have a high interest in skateboarding, so it'll be something with a skateboard on it, but it'll be directed towards football and different sports of that such. I love soccer, and I just like to just bring all of those things into one and make gear. 
Malcolm, how many um, players on, on Virginia Tech do you know and, and have you all communicated at all um, leading up to this game? I actually know about – I know two, but I have a very good relationship with the guy, Jaden Paiute. He's a receiver for them. He's from my city, Richmond, Virginia. And I took a couple of visits to Virginia Tech with him and his family. And we have a very good relationship. He's my dog. He's a very great receiver. And I just look forward to getting up to Virginia Tech this weekend and playing. Did you know Saturday that you were going to be playing um, more and, and have an expanded role? And what was it like getting ready for the game, knowing you would be a pretty big contributor? Yes, I knew that going into the game, I'll be playing more. I didn't know for sure that I would start. But over the past three weeks, like the coaches poured a lot into me and told me that it was time for me to step up. And I had to play a major role this the past week in practice, the past weeks of practice. And I just try to make sure I bring that energy and juice to the program and to the team on the field at all times, no matter how tired I get. I just try to stay on 100 at all times. I know Blacksburg isn't uh, extremely close to Richmond, but are you going to um, have several friends and family at the game on Saturday? No, sir. I heard that Governor Ralph Northam said that they, he won't allow fans at the Virginia Tech game and all the Virginia games from now on would not allow fans. That's my home state. I know a lot about it. So that's what I heard and that's what I'll go with. Is, is that pretty disappointing to hear? Yes, it is disappointing. I, I expect my family and friends to be there, but it's a rumor that I've heard of right now, but it's not set in stone. But knowing my state is something that I feel could happen. All right, so, Any other so my questions? wife is listening to the interview and, and she wants to know more about the skateboarding. How did you get into skateboarding? Tony Hawk was before your time. You know, what's the best trick that you can do? I can do a kickflip, a heel flip, and different different tricks. I really look up to my older brother, Michael Green, a lot on football and different sports, and I always aim to be better than him. And he was always good at skateboarding, even though he's a 300-pound D tackle. But since I was a little kid, we've always been skateboarding, and I always keep a skateboard with me. And I just love skateboarding. We used to go to the skate park and just have fun when I was a kid, and I enjoyed those times. How has he handled not having a season? He's handled it pretty good. He's working every single day, just becoming smarter and better at the game. And he's become a lot faster since I've known him. And he's a very versatile defensive lineman. And I looked at him on learning some blitz techniques from knowing that I play in nickel now and I'll be blitzing and how to move against defensive linemen, with offensive linemen. And I just feel that like my older brother is a very great player. And it's a lot that I can learn from him. And he took not having this season this year hard but he's adjusting and my family is great for adjusting on the moment and yeah